Hello everyone. Welcome back to Oceanography. In the last session, we were discussing on the ocean currents and the various factors responsible for the formation and the movement and the direction of these currents. In the upcoming sessions, we were discussing on the major currents that occur in the world oceans. Today, we are going to discuss the currents of the Pacific Ocean. The currents of the Pacific Ocean has two gyre system, the North Pacific gyre and the South Pacific gyre system. Gyres are large rotating current systems in the ocean. The motion of the gyre is determined by the direction of the prevailing winds and the influence of Coriolis effect. The Pacific Ocean currents consist of both the warm ocean current and the cold current. The North Pacific Ocean current moves in clockwise circulation while the South Pacific currents moves in anti-clockwise direction. Both these currents influence the climatic pattern in the coastal regions of Americas, Asia and Australia. The part of the Pacific Ocean that is lying to the north of the equator is termed as North Pacific Ocean and hence the currents in the northern part of the Pacific Ocean is termed as the North Pacific Currents. In the Pacific Ocean, between approximately 10 degree to 25 degree north of the equator, the trade winds generate the North Equatorial Current. This North Equatorial Current will start moving from the east of the Pacific Ocean towards the west of the ocean. As they flow from east to west, the volume of the water increases when they advance towards the west. Thus, the North Equatorial Current will start moving from the west coast of Central America to the Philippine coast. Upon reaching the Philippines, there will be a high volume of water that is piled up near to the coast of Philippines. And thus, the current will get divided into two, the north and the south. The lesser amount of water is being turned towards the south. And then, to compensate the deficit of water in the eastern part of the Pacific Ocean, they will start moving from the west to east. And this is termed as the counter equatorial current. The North Equatorial Current on reaching the Philippine Island will turn towards the north under the influence of Coriolis force and also on because of the shape of the coastline. These currents then will reach Taiwan and Japan and here the current is known as the Kuratio Current. Meanwhile, there is a cold current that comes from the polar region. These currents start from the Bering Strait and flow southward to reach the Kamchatka Peninsula. This current is termed as Oasio Current. There is one more cold current that comes from the North Pacific Ocean. These currents flow through the Sakhalin region to merge with the Oasio Current near to the Hokkaido coast. Both these cold currents will meet with the warm Koratio current to the north of the Japanese coast. And due to this, this region experiences a lot of mist and fog since the warm and the cold water gets mixed up. Upon reaching the north of Japan, this current will is being influenced by the prevailing westerlies and hence the currents will turn towards the right and flow eastwards as North Pacific Current. The North Pacific Current upon reaching the west coast of America will again get divided into two branches. The northern branch moves in an anti-clockwise direction and flows through the coastal regions of British Columbia and Alaska. 
These currents are comparatively warm when compared to the cold land areas. And hence this current is termed as the British Columbia or the Alaskan current. On reaching the west coast of North America, the southern branch that turns towards the south washes the coast of California. And this is known as Californian current. Since these currents move from cold region to comparatively warmer areas, it is a cold current. Thus completes the North Pacific Gaira system. Now let's move into the South Pacific current. The part of the Pacific current that lies to the south of the equator is termed as the South Pacific current. The South Equatorial current is a warm current that flows parallel to the equator from the coast of Central America to the eastern coast of Australia. On reaching the eastern coast of Australia, there will be another counter equatorial current to compensate the high volume of water that occurs in the eastern Australian coast. And thus the counter equatorial current will start moving parallel to the equator from the east coast of Australia back to the northern part of South America. On reaching the East Australian coast, the South Equatorial Current, as a result of the Coriolis forts, as well as due to the shape of the coastline, it will flow along the eastern coast of Australia. And this is termed as the East Australian Current. While it reaches to the south of Australia, there will be another cold current that comes from the polar areas or the Antarctica. And this will get merged with the East Australian current creating fog and mist as a result of the mixing of the warm and the cold waters. After reaching to the south of the Australia, these two currents combinedly started moving towards the east of the Atlantic Ocean as a result of the effect of prevailing westerlies and due to the Coriolis effect. And thus they start moving towards the southern tip of southeast coast of South America. On reaching the west of South American region, the South Pacific current turned towards the north and they moves along the coast of Chile and Peru. And this is being termed as the Peru current or the Humboldt current. Thus, these cold currents washes the coast of Peru and Chile. And ultimately, they will join back with the South Equatorial current to complete the Gairai system. Thus, at a quick glance, let's look into the North and the South Pacific Gyre systems. The North Pacific Gyre system moves in a clockwise direction while the South Pacific Gyre system has an anti-clockwise direction. Both these equatorial currents as a result of the trade winds will move towards the west of the continents and then they will turn towards the right as a result of Coriolis effect in the Northern Hemisphere and towards the left in the Southern Hemisphere. Upon reaching the northern and the southern tip, they will get again diverted towards the right direction in the northern hemisphere and towards the left direction in the southern hemisphere due to the effect of prevailing westerlies. Again, after reaching to the western part of the continents of North America and South America, the North Equatorial or the North Pacific Current will come towards the South and the South Pacific Current will go towards the North again as a result of the Coriolis force. And finally, they join with the Equatorial systems to complete the Gairai system. Meanwhile, there will be 
a counter equatorial current in both these systems to compensate the volume of water. Friends, I hope you have enjoyed today's session. For any doubts or suggestions or queries, please post in the comment box or in the Edmodo. I wish you a great day ahead. Thank you everyone.